Good morning. I understand we had a little technical glitch with yesterday's sermon, so we'll try it again today. The title of this message is, Are You Ready for Heaven? Our text is Matthew 24, verse 44. And let us read. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. We pray your many blessings upon those who are listening. We pray, Lord, for those who are sick and afflicted in the hospitals and nursing homes and even within their own homes. I do pray for our men and women in the military. I pray for the first responders, especially our police officers. And I just pray that you would use this message for your honor and for your glory. And forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. In, in the book of Matthew, we see the disciples, they come to Jesus and they ask him, Lord, what can we expect when the end of the world comes? And Jesus tells them of the many things which will transpire in the last days. And if you'd like to read about those, you can do it in uh, Matthew 24, verse 40 through 35. Then in verses 36 through 51, Jesus makes a special plea for men to be ready when he comes. They need to be ready to meet him. Now, the second coming of Jesus takes place in two parts. The first part is what we call the rapture. And at this time, Jesus will call all those who have received him as Savior to come home to heaven. At this time, he will rise those believers who have already died and he will take those who are living on to heaven to be with him. Part two of that will take place about seven years later, and he will descend upon the world and will defeat all of his enemies and will establish his kingdom upon the earth. And then he will personally rule in peace and harmony for 1,000 years. Of these two events, neither can be said more important than the other in the eternal scope of things. However, for those who are alive today, who are looking forward to the rapture, it is an all-important thing. Why, you may say, because it is the next event on the prophetic calendar of God, and it will happen. In fact, it could happen today. It could happen tomorrow, or it could happen at any time, for no one knows the time that that will take place except the Heavenly Father. Not even Jesus knows, just God alone. Therefore, it is very important that we understand the great need for being ready when Jesus returns. My desire this morning is to tell you what the Bible teaches us about the event known as the rapture. And in doing so, I hope to show you the importance of being ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Because just as sure as we are breathing air today, Jesus Christ will return. And I believe it's going to be very, very soon. So let's take a few minutes to look at this and see if you are ready to go to heaven. Folks, it will take, the rapture will take place suddenly. In 1 Corinthians 15, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sweat, sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. The rapture will take place in the twinkling of an eye. Now, a blink of the eye has been timed as one fiftieth of a second. A twinkling of the eye is even faster than that. There will be absolutely no time for you to prepare. Either you're ready or you're not ready. And the Bible is clear on the teaching that we not count on there being another day in which to get ready. Because when the rapture occurs, if you don't leave, you don't get a second chance. In Proverbs, it says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, 
for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And then again in 2 Corinthians 6, chapter, or chapter 6, verse 2, it says, For he saith, I have heard thee in the time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I set forward thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the time, the day of salvation. You need to get saved right now, today. If you're not saved, my friend, you may not get another chance. There is no announcements that will be made. There is no advertisements posted on the telephone pole. There's no news flashes or breaking news on television or radio. Jesus will simply come for his church in a split second of time, and then he and all of those who know him as Lord and Savior will return to heaven. In the computer world, there is a division of time called the nanosecond. And this is a span of time equivalent to one one billionth of a second. Now, folks, that's fast. And if mankind and his technology can achieve this, imagine what the Lord can do with his infinite power. May I remind you that right now, today, is the only time you have to make that decision. Because it's the only time you're guaranteed right now. For yesterday is canceled. Tomorrow is only a promise. And today is the only spendable day that you have. A day that you can make a decision in. When the rapture occurs, it will be a solemn time. Solemn because all those who do not know Jesus Christ will be left behind. In the book of Luke, chapter 17, it says, I tell you, Jesus speaking, I tell you that in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. My friend, after the rapture, there's going to be thousands of people who will be looking for their missing loved ones. But they'll never find them. And they'll never see them again because they weren't ready to go to heaven. Mothers will be separated from their children. Grandparents will be separated from their grandchildren. Husbands and wives will be separated from one another. And the list just goes on and on and on. Because just as sure as we are today, we must be sure that we're saved. If you know to do something and refuse, you are guilty of sin. James 4.17 says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, it is sin to him. This will be a solemn time because the rapture will signal the beginning of the great tribulation. Some of the events in this horrible time that will take place is catastrophe after catastrophe after catastrophe. Evil will run rampant. Fire and brimstone will rain down from heaven. And all these things will be shocking. The most shocking thing is that many who expect to go with the redeemed but will instead be left behind. In Matthew 7, 21, 22, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful things? Many people today have false hopes of heaven. But do not be deceived, my friend. For God knows your heart. In the book of Psalms 44, 21, 
says, Shall not God search this out? For he knoweth the secrets of the heart. He knows exactly what's in your heart. He, you may not know, but he does. There's only one way of salvation. John 3, 3, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This new birth can only come about through one person. In Acts 4, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And when it is obtained, it carries with it a priceless guarantee. John 14 says, Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Don't be shocked after the rapture. Make things right this morning. 2 Peter 1.10 Wherefore, beloved brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. God's telling you. He says, look, I chose you. I called you. Do your best to live the way that shows you really are one of my children, one of my called, one of my chosen ones. And if you do all this, you will never fail. In 2 Corinthians 13, 15, it says, Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. Don't be a reprobate. Be a saved man. Be a saved woman. Be a saved boy and girl. When the rapture occurs, it will be a time of satisfying. There will be a glad reunion at that time. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18 says, But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from the heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. My friends, are you looking forward to the rapture? Or do you fear the day that it will come? Loved ones, saints of old, Jesus, the Heavenly Father, will all be there. There will be a new body given to us. 1 Corinthians 15 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and the mortal must put on immortality. There will be no more death. No more disease, no more aging, no more pain, no more tears. No more worries. There will be a new home. You see, we're just pilgrims passing through this world. But one day, when the rapture comes, we who know Jesus Christ as our own personal Savior, will go home to live in heaven where there are streets of gold where there's no night, no sin, no curse, nothing but glory forever. 
and it is satisfactory to know that I have been made ready through the faith in Jesus Christ. In Acts 16, 31, it says, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. It doesn't say may be saved. It says thou shalt be saved. In Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves it is the gift of God. The rapture will also bring sadness. Why sad, you may ask? Because some who are listening to my voice right now, some of you may not be ready to meet Jesus. And if he were to come right now, you would never have another opportunity to be saved. So why the sadness? Because if the rapture takes place today, I will never see you again. You will be lost forever. And no matter how you look at it, that is a sad thing. However, folks, it doesn't have to be that way. You can be made ready right now. All you have to do is come to Jesus by faith, and he will save your soul. And he will keep you and take you to heaven when he returns for his children, for his church. In John 6, it says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no ways cast out. 1 Peter 1, 5, Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Folks, I'm looking forward to the rapture. How about you? For me, it'll be a time of freedom. I will simply leave this whole world with all of its problems, with all of its sin, with all of its evilness, with its death, and I will ascend into heaven. And when I'm in heaven, I will enjoy the presence of the Lord and all of his saints forever. But what about you? What will happen to you? If Jesus were to come right now, would you go with him or would you be left behind for the tribulation? Will you spend your future in heaven or will you spend your future in hell? If there's the slightest hint of doubt about your relationship with the Lord Jesus, I beg you, please, make things right with him today. John 3.16 tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So my friend, just admit you're a sinner. You've sinned against a holy God. Put your trust and faith in Jesus. Call out to him and ask him to save your soul. And whatever you need, Salvation, prayer, church membership, whatever it is, ask Jesus to fulfill those needs. You can do that by saying a simple prayer, something like this. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I need your forgiveness. I believe Jesus is your son. I believe he died for my sins on an old rugged cross. I believe he was buried and that you rose him from the grave on the third day. I believe he, he sits with you right now in heaven. And I ask that he forgive me of my sins and that you help me to follow him for the remainder of my days. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it in your heart, God heard you, and Jesus forgave your sins. So you may be wondering, well, Brother Bob, what happens now? We need to find you a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, Bible-preaching church and get involved in it. You need to find you a quiet place to read and study 
God's word and to pray and listen to what the Father has to say to you. You need to follow Jesus in scriptural baptism. And you need to tell others what Jesus has done for you. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for this word. Thank you so much for all of your blessings. Lord, I pray that if anyone is saved today, that they would get involved with the church, with the God-fearing church, with the Bible-believing church and that you would use them for your honor and glory. Again, I pray that you use me anywhere that I may be of use to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.